Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a dramatic double exposure image for version CS6 and later. I provided two images that you could use to follow along. Their links are in my video's description below or in my project files. If you prefer to use your own photos instead, make sure that the upper part of the background in both images are white or close to white and make sure your subject is backlit so it's silhouetted. Before we begin, if you're not already a subscriber to Blue Lightning TV, click the small subscribe button anytime at the lower right corner in the video. We'll place this photo into the other photo. Make sure your move tool is active. If it isn't, press V on your keyboard. Drag the photo onto the tab of the other document and without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. We'll reduce its opacity so we can see the other photo through it. In this example, we want to position the street photo over the man with the hat so the sky is in the middle of the man's head. To do this, open your transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. If you can't see the transform's entire bounding box, press Ctrl or Command Zero. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, Press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it in or out. To position it, go inside the bounding box and drag the photo. Then press Enter or Return. To zoom back in, press Ctrl or Command and the plus key on your keyboard. Increase the opacity back to 100%. Next, we'll make a selection of the sky and then save it since we'll need it later. Open your Quick Selection tool and make the radius 10 pixels. Drag your tool over the sky to select it. If you're using a different photo and you'd like to refine the selection's edges, go to Select and Select in Mask or in earlier versions of Photoshop, Refine Edge. I did in-depth tutorials on both Refine Edge and Select in Mask, so if you'd like to watch them, I provided their links in my video's description. Click Save Selection and click OK. To check it, open your Channels panel. If you don't see the panel, go to Window and Channels. Below the Channels, you should see Alpha 1. Open back the Layers panel and hide the top layer. Make your subject active. We'll make a selection around the subject. To do this, you can use the Quick Selection tool again. Since this particular photo's background is out of focus, I'll show you a great filter that you can use to make the selection if the Photoshop version you're working with is CC 2014 or later. Go to Select and Focus Area. Adjust the In Focus Range parameter to broaden or narrow down the selection. If you move the slider to zero, the entire image gets selected. However, if you move the slider to the extreme right, you may not see anything selected at all, or you may see only the parts of the image that's in clearest focus. Drag it to a point where you get the best selection. You can also use the brush controls to manually add or remove areas. If the selection area has noise, you can control it by adjusting the Image Noise Level Slider Control. However, if your subject is already selected well, you can leave the Auto option checked. To feather the edges of the selection, you can select Soften Edge. If you want to further refine it, you can click the Select and Mask button, then output it to a selection. Make the top layer visible and active. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the active layer. Make the layer active and change its blend mode to screen. Click the adjustment layer icon and click color lookup. 
Open the Load 3D LUT flyout list. I'll click Late Sunset .3D L. Feel free to experiment with the other 3D LUT presets. LUT is an acronym for Lookup Table. They're mainly used in the film industry to calculate a color correction of how the final film will look on the big screen. Next, we'll darken the bottom of the city street, which will draw the eye more to the center of our image. Check your foreground and background colors. If they're not black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Black should be your foreground color. Make the city street layer active. Open your gradient tool and make sure the linear gradient icon is active. Click the gradient bar to open the gradient editor. Click the foreground to transparent preset and place your cursor at the bottom of your image. Press and hold the shift key as you drag the tool straight up to where the sky starts. Then release. Next, we'll add a bright sun flare at the horizon where the sky and the road meet. Make a new layer and change its blend mode to screen. Invert your foreground and background colors by clicking this icon or by pressing X on your keyboard. White is now your foreground color. Open your brush tool and brush picker. We'll adjust the size in a moment. Make the hardness 0% and the opacity 75%. The flow is 100%. To make your brush bigger or smaller, first make sure your caps lock key is off and press the right or left bracket key on your keyboard. For this image, I made my brush size 600 pixels. Position your brush directly over the horizon and left click once. Lastly, we'll remove any visible lines that may be showing at the top edge of your subject. To do this, first make the top layer active and make a new layer above it. In this empty layer, we'll make a composite snapshot of our visible image. Press Alt, Control, Shift, E on Windows or Option, Command, Shift, E on a Mac. Control click or command click the layer mask of your subject to make a selection of its shape. Go to Select, Modify, and Expand. Expand it two or three pixels and click OK. Open your channels panel and go to the thumbnail of Alpha 1, which, if you recall, is the shape of the selection of the sky that you saved earlier. Press Alt Control on Windows or Option Command on a Mac as you click the thumbnail to remove the selection of the sky from the selection of your subject. Invert the selection by pressing Control or Command Shift I. To check its shape, press Q to see it as a quick mask. Revert it back into a selection by pressing Q again. Hide the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command H. It's still there, it's just hidden from view. Open back the Layers panel. With the composite snapshot still active, open your eyedropper tool. Place your cursor directly on the color above the line that you'd like to get rid of and left click your mouse or pen to pick up that color. Press B on your keyboard to open back your brush tool and left click a few times to hide the unwanted lines and blend the two skies together. Then deselect the hidden selection by pressing Ctrl or Command D. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.